And welcome back to the Pride of Detroit POD cast. Continuing along, we've been talking a lot about Dan Campbell's comments in the past week here, which is giving us insight into the draft, into the team. And where we led off, we were talking about Kyle Hamilton. We were talking about Malik Willis. We were talking about positional value. And we were talking about, you know, the right strategy. And I feel like this is a great place. Uh, was it Ryan, Jeremy, you were kind of leading us into this about you know, going for who's going to be best available. And he had a lot to say about, you know, who you're looking for from that pack about the top three edge rushers. And we had a lot of cave on Thibodeau talk from, from uh, the big man. He was saying about Thibodeau, he's an explosive athlete. He's a playmaker. He's got a good quick first step. He, I mean, he's something else. He's pretty special on tape. Yeah. I mean, it, it was interesting because he, it, it felt like he was bombarded with, Kayvon Thibodeau related questions and I guess it was just it was you know it's fresh off the wheels of, of them you know bombarding sending him. everyone to Oregon's yeah, pro day exactly and so it, it was a hot topic and and obviously the the character stuff was a big part of the conversation and had some really interesting things to to say about how they view character and and obviously I mean it's no it's no it, it, it's worthy of conversation here because the lines have made it no secret that culture and character absolutely matter. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like with every re-signing or, or new signing this free agency, culture fit came up with every single person. And so whether or not Kayvon Thibodeau is a culture fit is a necessary conversation that we have to have. And it's hard for us to say without a shadow of a doubt that the, the kind of person that Kayvon Thibodeau is, but it, it all seemed to boil down to one thing to Dan Campbell. Do you love football? Everything else is noise. Doesn't matter what you do off the field. Doesn't matter what what other interests you have. Doesn't matter if if you if you want to do other things as well. If football is is a, a passion of yours, if you love the game of football, we can make it work. We believe in our coaching staff to to straighten out everything else. And this is where the whole like we had a drunk player in Miami, and and he prioritize football once he walked in the building and we made that work and that's fine. We don't want drunk people, but we can make that work. I don't want to get into a slippery slope there because I don't think it's, it's relevant. I don't think he's trying to say that we, we take problematic people. I don't think he's even suggesting that Kayvon Thibodeau is a problematic person. I think it's more just like, Hey, if you walk in these doors and, and give it all your, give it your all work your ass off. You're, you're good for us. And I, and I think part of that is actually encouraging for, for Thibodeau, because I know there are questions about his effort. I know there are questions about whether he loves the game. I don't have those particular questions, but I think I, I think what I liked about what Dan Campbell said and why it might say that Thibodeau is a fit is like we don't care about like we don't care about what you do. That they're they're you know I think part of the reason he went to Oregon over some of the other schools is because Oregon accepted that he has other interests. The Lions are going to be one of those teams that accept that you have one of those interests. Because once you walk into the doors, it's all about football. And I don't I don't have that much of a question whether Kayvon Thibodeau loves the game enough where that he can compartmentalize his life and be like, all right, when I'm in these doors, I'm giving it I my mean, own. that's that that's that's the definition of professional. That's the definition of professional. When you're on the clock, you are on the clock. When you come same same idea. When you come through those doors, you're hundred percent. That's the very idea. I think some people miss that. I know in our modern age, nobody really seems to understand on the clock, off the clock that well, but I think that's kind of what it's hinting towards there. Like, you know, when you're on the clock, you're on the clock and these guys are professionals. It means that you show up, you do your job and it doesn't matter what you need to do to prepare or what you do outside. As long as you are ready, some guys might be preparing all day. Like, you know, we talk about Jamal Williams, how he was, you know, constantly practicing in, in the summertime, but you know, if, if whatever Kayvon does, as long as he's able to like come in and play at a hundred percent, then whatever works works. Right. Yeah. And, and there's part of me too, that when I listen to Kayvon Thibodeau talk, I try to block out some of that noise because I think that when he speaks, like I hear a guy who has his head on straight and I think he realizes that connection between football and what he wants to do outside of football. I think he understands that those two are inextricably linked, that success in football will open up opportunities and avenues for him that he wants to pursue, whether it's 
crypto or you know whatever the other interests that he has maybe dinosaurs i don't know if he if he's i mean he he's not same, alone in the, he the same interest as miles garrett then everything's fine there's a lot of guys who have interest in crypto i don't think it's an it's a good interest to have considering i think the whole thing's a damn scam but like he's not alone like there's plenty of guys who've converted their contracts to bitcoin des bryant's out here with nfts all the all the damn day long like well, it doesn't like, even matter. Like it's, yeah. it's 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 advertising too, right? Like I mean, we saw it all over the Super Bowl. I mean, it was yeah. everybody from LeBron James to Steph Curry to you know Matt Damon. I, I think everybody's getting into this stuff, but um, I th- it's not a huge concern because I think that like like we talked about on First Bite, Jeremy, that uh, I think they actually talked about this off air. But the way that Dan Campbell is approaching pro days is that he's not going to any of them because he wasn't able to go to some of them. and he's letting the tape communicate to him what he needs to know about the player and i think that dan campbell can get a sense of oh is Kayvon thibodeau's motor a concern is the way that he's playing is that concerning is he giving up on plays is he not giving each play 100 that's something that's going to pop off tape for a guy like dan campbell sure but i think the other part of this is interesting and maybe this falls on the maybe the lines aren't interested in Thibodeau end of the spectrum is, is he was asked straight up, like, why are you guys doing so much research on Kayvon? And his answer was essentially, well, some guys answer all the questions right away. You don't have many questions about them because it's, it's obvious with these guys, other guys, you need to do a little bit of extra work. And that can be about their play on the field. That can be about their personality. That can be mental, but you need to be thorough about it. And so he, he more or less said like, we, Kayvon Thibodeau wasn't able to answer all of our questions with his play, with this, with that. They needed to do all this research. They needed to show up to a game uh, on the West Coast when he played. They needed to be at his pro day. They needed to talk to him at the NFL Combine. They need to have him in for a top 30 visit that we're getting on Tuesday. It, it shows that there's at least some hesitation there. It shows that there's at least some questions that they need to be answered. Now, you should be doing most of this sort of stuff anyways when you when you have – something as valuable as a top two pick. But I, I think that shows that there's at least a little pause that, that they, they need to get a thorough answer here on, on whether, whether it, you know, his, his other interests bleed over into football, because there are, there are some people that are questioning whether he's taking off plays or whether, you know, he's not giving it his all on every play or whatever it is. And so they, they definitely need to straight that out, straighten that out. Because like I said, like character on the field, is a premium with this team. And so if there's any concern that, that he isn't giving it his all out there on every snap, Dan Campbell's going to notice, or their scouts are going to notice, or their, their front office is going to notice, and it's going to take him off their board. Again, I don't really see that. I don't. I, I think he's all in when he's on the field, when he's on the practice field, all that sort of stuff. I don't have that many questions, but I'm also not the guy that's coaching him every day. I'm not, I haven't seen every single one of cave on Thibodeau's snaps. So it's interesting, and uh, I, I still think he, he's in play. I personally think he should be in play. But, you know, I, I would say Dan Campbell's answers about him were pretty mixed in a way that I'm not sure if they're interested or not. Can I, say, can I ask this? Because this is – now I'm going to put on the tinfoil hat. I know that's usually Ryan's domain. I'm sorry, but let me borrow that for a second. Because we talked about is the interest in Malik Willis smokescreen. Is all these concerns about Kayvon Thibodeau maybe smokescreen? to like say like, hey, we'd, we're not quite sure about this guy at number two, maybe to gin up some interest, not not to, not to for other teams to trade up for, for Kayvon Thibodeau, but that the Lions maybe aren't comfortable at number two. They'd like to, you know, move back and maybe you're the team that if you want the quarterback that desperately, not only are the Lions throwing up smoke screen about the quarterback, they're throwing up smoke screen about probably who is projected to come off number two off the board. Another reason why this year, <clears throat> excuse me another reason why this year sucks so much to have a top five pick is that the draft truly starts at one and then everything falls into place you know how many years we go into the draft and it's basically a foregone conclusion who the number one pick is going to be it seems like it's that it seems like it's that way perpetually that the draft starts at two not at all this year Nope. Not at all. Like the draft truly starts when the Jaguars are on the clock because there's just so many, there's, there's so much talent at the top of the draft that nobody's been able to, 
distinguish themselves from anybody else. Especially three guys playing the same edge position too. Right. Yeah. Between and I mean, granted, we weren't talking about Walker a few years ago, but now there's mots that have the Lions taking, you know, the top of the draft going Hutchinson, Walker, Equanu. Like th- those are the top three. I think what was it uh, was it Pete Prisco or one of the one of the CBS guys had a mock like that. But like that's the point is that there's still so much you know, so many questions between these three guys that nobody's quite sure how to, how to suss them out. It's, it's, it's interesting, man. I, I, I really don't have a strong feeling on, on where my, my only strong feeling is that if Hutchinson is there, I think he's the guy and yes, it, it, it's worth, it's worth mentioning. Like there's some hey, talk, there's some talks heating up that Jacksonville is really interested in Trevon Walker. And I don't know how real they are, but some some people on draft are, are putting their name out there and saying, this rum these rumblings, they're real. Jacksonville and, and Trent Balky has thrown his support behind the athletic supreme guy, and it's paid off in, in some cases in his past when he was with San that would make That would make Lions fans very happy. I don't know if I don't know. We we haven't talked at all about Aiden Hutchinson, and I feel like a lot of it is just I mean, we, we've talked about this before, though, Jeremy, a little bit, that a lot of it is very much a recency bias and local background, backyard bias. And I, I don't, I, we really, I think probably one of our upcoming podcasts, we need to sit down and really go in deep on, on Hutchinson about whether or not, like, because I feel like just because most people know him from Michigan, it makes him the most endearing and he talks well. And we obviously, we've talked with him, we've had him on the podcast. And, but, you know, that doesn't answer the question of, are you the best player over Walker and Thibodeau? There would be nothing more NFL off season draft ish than us completely coming full circle to somehow landing Aiden Hutchinson again. Because remember like three months ago, it was Jaguars are going offensive tackle. Aiden Hutchinson is going to be there and he's going to be the Lions pick. If we come back all the way in April and that's the pick anyways, albeit because Jacksonville went with a different edge rusher. That's that's just peak NFL Twitter. Yeah, and again, it makes the fans happy because he's the Michigan guy. And I'll be good. pissed because that means that I wasted three months of my life. <laughs> um, <laughs> newsflash. I I think that's happening anyway, Ryan. <laughs> it was it was the the quarterback talk where the was the real quarterback talk was the friends we made along the way. Uh, I I don't want to keep it just a draft, so we've got about halfway into the segment still. Um, he had a few, Dan Campbell had a few interesting comments about the actual current line, Detroit Lions roster. And I wanted to start with Will Smith, Will, uh, Will Smith, Will Harris. I'm not, I'm not trying to slap nobody. <laughs> Will Harris, who um, hasn't really been great sledding for Will Harris lately. Uh, Kyle Mikey pointed out he's been a top bottom 10 safety since arriving, arriving in Detroit per PFF. And last year he was, according to Pro Football Focus, he was bottom two. Now I have I have to go check those numbers about what qualifies that. Either way, we I don't think I'm I'm breaking any news to Lions fans that Will Harris at safety has not been very good. However, at corner, he's shown some improvement. And Dan Campbell was asked about it and, and called him. And this is the new position, and I'm always excited about new positions. I don't even know how to say this. Kafety. Cafe tea, not cafe tea. I don't think so. Cafe tea, cafe tea. That seems confusing. Coffee. So he says, "Do you put him at corner or do you put him at safety?" Well, I don't think you put him at safety. But anyway, um, let me just do the actual quote. Do you put him at corner or do you put him at safety? I'll be honest. We haven't just locked that down right now. We're still kind of talking about it. That's not a bad thing. All right. Hey. Kind of might be a bad thing. If you don't know which position I plays. I well, okay. So I, I feel Will like... Harris is by far the least liked lion on the Detroit Lions roster from the fan base, right? Like I think it's yes. far and away that he's the most fair, unfair. He receives, yeah, he receives the most vitriol for some of a his lot of blame. Teams. A lot of blame for coverage problems. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like we need to talk about this little quote. This quote a little bit more because I feel like it's being a little bit misinterpreted because I've seen some people suggest, Oh, he's, he's moving to full full-time corner now. Like that's it. Like 
Okay, yeah. no, that's not what he's saying. He, he's saying he has versatility, which we kind of already knew because he played corner last year. He played nickel a bunch. And we also kind of knew this might be in the cards for him because at the end of the season, Aaron Glenn con- compared him to who? Do you remember who? It's a guy we talked about a lot during free agency. New Orleans Saint? Yes, P.J. Williams, a guy who did both for the New Orleans Saints. He said of Will Harris, this is quoting Aaron Glenn, uh, I had a guy like this in, named P.J. Williams with the Saints, and he was just like Will. Actually, he wasn't as good of an athlete as Will, but one of the things was he was very smart. At the drop of the hat, we could put him in a position that he didn't get a lot of reps in that week, and you see Will doing the same thing. It's just the fact that his mentality of being the type of guy, because there are not a lot of guys that want to do that. So Will Harris is a guy that if if a guy gets injured at nickel, they'll drop it in at nickel. Maybe he'll even play some outside corner. But this isn't. I don't think this is a thing where they are going to groom him to be a full-time corner. I would be very surprised about that. I think they just view him as a utility guy. And maybe, like, obviously, you, you got to pick one room where he spends the majority of his time, unless you really want to split it 50-50. But I don't think Will Harris is just, like, suddenly not a safety anymore. I don't think that's how the Lions are going to be approaching this. I, I don't think that would be the case because he wouldn't call him a safety. <laughs> right. Right? He would just call him a cornerback. Yeah. But, Yeah. I mean, one, so if, if you want to look at someone like P.J. Williams, uh, didn't play a full season last year with, with the Saints. There was kind of more of a utility guy. And maybe this is what we're looking into what the Lions do with Will Harris. Is maybe he's just more of a situational guy. He had about 170 snaps at safety, 222 at nickel. So not, not quite a 50-50 split, but, you know, 59 in the box. So if you're talking between safety and corner, he, he also played 44 wide corner. So... I would say that's almost a 50-50 split between corner and safety. I think that's what you're probably going to expect from Will Harris. Like, to me, the question is, is he a starter in any of these roles? Is he only going to be a nickel corner when they want three safeties on the field? And, and who's going to be that third safety is also a, a legit question to have. Um, but I don't know. I, I think I, I think we, I think people might be overreacting to this. And be, everyone loves a position change, right? Like Everyone wants Okuda to be a safety. Everyone wants this guy to be that. Because you can do it in Madden, and suddenly his overall doesn't change that much. I, I think that you're just going to use Will Harris as a guy who's like, wherever we need him. If we think he's a good matchup, he's a long, athletic guy, and they've got a long, athletic tight end, let's drop him into the box and have him be nickel against this tight end. If they don't, if they have more of a, a shifty tight end, then maybe he's just a reserve safety that week. Um, but it, this isn't just, now he's a corner. That's not that's not what's happening here. No. no. As, as, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a cave. He wouldn't be a capety. 